How you doing? Mr. Coleman here. Just going to show you how to use the coping saw when you're trying to create your cast. This is a cavity void for the cast for the pewter casting. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to process. This is a heart. It's in, in an upside down formation. Reason being uh, is so that it um, has downward slopes and it casts properly. This is one that's already been cast before. Um, as you can see the pewter flows down vertically from the top. Talking about types of saws, you could use uh, another type of saw, which is a tenon saw. Now, the tenon saw, uh, very useful for cutting straights, but the copen saw, as you can see, um, has got a much smaller blade and it's able to get into uh, curves and corners um, much easier. Now, the parts of the copen saw are as follows. This is the handle, this is the frame, this is the sighting pins, and this is the blade. Now the blades must always uh, face towards the handle, so the actual teeth, if you just look closely, the teeth actually go down towards the handle. That means that when you're pulling back, that it actually makes the cut, and as you push forward, it clears the cut. Um, if you look at the sighting pins, which are here and here, they must be in line. This here is an example of a set of sighting pins that are not in line. That blade is about to break if it's turned any more so. This is what happens when the blade breaks. It's obviously very sharp and you need to hand it to your teacher so that he can get rid of it and make sure that you're safe. Now I'm just going to move the chair and I'm going to set myself up for the cutting. Now, first of all, if I was to use my vise, which I'm holding the actual hardboard in here, just going to do a quick move there so that you see what I'm doing better. Um, if I was to hold it very, very high in the vise, the coping saw would shatter the actual hardboard. So if I just give you a quick demonstration, as you can clearly see, it's moving and it's not doing what I want it to do. So if I bring it down lower in the vise, I'll be able to cut. Now this blade is in tension, it's been held from both sighting pins and I want to keep the blade level with the table and when I get into corners I want to cut as I turn. So I'm just going to demonstrate that for you now. I'm keeping the blade level with the table, I'm going to keep both hands on the handle, make sure you do not put your hand on the frame, it is not a hacksaw, make sure the work is closed in the vise nice and slowly cut. When I get to a corner, I lift up the piece, I close it again, and to take the corner I cut as I turn. And I keep moving the woodwork while I cut with the cup. Notice how I've gone about halfway through. So when you're in the corners, you cut as you turn. Keep the work low in the vise as to where you're cutting. Notice how it's not shattering now, because it's close to the place that I'm cutting. can be quite tiresome having to continuously open and close the vise, but make sure that the work doesn't shatter because the hardboard will break on you, that is a fact. And that's that. Just to look at it. That goes in the bin, and now I have my cavity. 
I'm now going to get the cavity ready for the pewter casting. I'm going to get some sandpaper and a file. Here's my sandpaper. Here's, here's my file. I can put the sandpaper on top of the file because the sandpaper is for the woodwork. The file is for metalwork. I can file it in two ways. I can either go through filing like this, going forward, holding the blade, holding the handle, or I can draw file it by using my wrists and drawing it down like that. Finally, before you pewter cast it, could you make sure that the rough edges, just see it there, on the top of the board are even. So you need to file down the top edges. The reason being is that the pewter will come out the cast, fall on the floor, and possibly fall on your skin through your shoes and whatnot. So that's how you prepare your cast.